A very good afternoon and thanks for clicking on to edition 40 of the Global Weather and Climate Report. It's Sunday and of course it is the weekly look back at the extremes that have taken place around the world. But before we get into the video, please like, please share with your friends and family and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. There is so much to cover in today's video. There is so much content, not only here on YouTube, but on markvoganweather.com with monthly outlooks. Going to be coming up with the summer 2023 forecast in the coming um, you know, 10 days or so, actually. And uh, that's going to be a very interesting one as well. Oh, um, of course, I've got a couple of videos um, in the last few days with, um, uh, I was in Poland, I was in the uh, Czech Republic, and I was in um, Slovakia as well. So there is uh, some content that you can look back on in recent days that may interest you. Um, you can take it or leave it, of course. You don't have to look if you don't really want to. But um, yeah, I, I strive to provide you with the uh, unique weather content content and there is so many things to look at with regards to um you know global weather as well as climate now the subject that i want to specifically talk about today is the um controversial um theory of increased uh underwater volcanic activity warming of the oceans and warming of the atmosphere on a global scale in my opinion, there is no denying that the planet has been gradually warming. Some would say it's been you know, rapidly warming. Some would say it has been slowly warming. And others would say that it isn't warming at all. The What I'm going to discuss in today's video is uh, simply my own opinion. Uh, something uh, It's food for thought. It, it gives you the chance to be able to think of things rather than looking at um, you know, a specific bias opinion whether it be to do with global cooling or global warming whatever side of the fence you sit on this is basically my interpretation i do not profess to be uh, an expert in any of the subjects that i'm talking about including weather even though i've been talking about weather and touching on climate now for the good you know best part of 15 to 20 years uh, whether it's been publicly or whether it's been you know through other uh, written material and whatnot, um, I don't profess to, to be an expert at all. And, and quite frankly, atmospheric science is way over my head. And, um, you know, I wish I knew more, uh, but unfortunately I don't. Um, so, but it's, it, it just makes me think as time goes on, with all these heat records falling and, uh, you know, the extremes that are taking place, I, I personally don't believe that the extremes that we're seeing today is really any worse than what we've seen, you know, say 50, 100, 200 years ago, a million years ago, you know, thousands of years ago. The planet is such an ancient place. I find it very, very difficult to believe that in the last 30 years or so, the planet has warmed completely due to man-made uh, contribution. Um, I, sh I really, really struggle to believe that, you know, the history of Earth's climate, you know, the sea surface temperatures fluctuating back and forward, that this is the warmest that we've ever seen. I just simply struggle to believe that, if I'm being honest, folks. And I'll touch on the underwater volcanic activity in just a second because it's a very, very interesting subject that was raised by weatherbill.com's Joe Bastardi um, in, in recent months, in the last 12 months or so. He's really been speaking quite a lot about the uh, increase in underwater volcanic activity, the potential warming of the oceans on a global scale now at the moment i believe anyway based on various data sources the global sea surface temperature anomaly is at the highest it's ever been now the ever been bit gets me really gets me because i just think how do you know that the waters uh, are at their warmest now than they've ever been so i struggle with that one i struggle with the fact that i don't believe that the the planet 
hasn't been as warm as this in the past and there is aspects there's communities out there you know that are doing studies that have proven that the medieval warm period was warmer than it is today that the modern warm period is not the warmest in in earth's history um so yeah yeah we'll we'll get to that in just a second i always run out of time so i'm going to really try and get down to this and 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 quickly as well this is off weatherbell.com this is the cdas data for the month of april and you can see here the areas of cool versus warm now according to this africa was mainly cooler than average most of europe was below average temperature wise We've also got very cold compared to average Mongolia, Central Russia, Western and Northern China. India has been cold. Pakistan has been cold. Now, bear in mind, India and Pakistan are reaching their warmest period of the year. So that's worth paying attention to. Most of Australia below average in, in the month of April. Very cold compared to average Alaska, Southern Canada, Northern and uh, Western United States. Texas, uh, we've got parts of South America below average as well. Very, very warm compared to average. And of course, there's been a lot of focus on the Spanish heat wave, 38.8 Cordoba Airport in southern Spain. That's a new all-time April record for the country of Spain. I believe Africa, nor um, Northwest Africa, uh, Morocco to be specific, had the warmest April day on record as well as Portugal. But let's uh, look at the big picture um, and we see plenty of warm areas as well as cold areas. So warm than average, of course, most of the, um, the South Asia mainland here. So Laos, uh, Myanmar, Thailand, Cambodia, um, you know, uh, Vietnam it has been very, very hot compared to average in recent times. Uh, all time record breaking heat here. We've also seen very warm conditions across Greenland, northern portions of North America. Uh, the UK was close to average in terms of the temperature anomaly. Um, uh, so yeah, so you can see that there certainly the month of March was a good deal warmer. Look at that there, that incredible how warm March was versus April, as you can see here. That's very interesting indeed. May so far, it's been boiling across the northern half of north america as you can see here but significant cold areas india pakistan most of the middle east you know this is stuff that you're not seeing in mainstream media by the way look at africa look at europe particularly northern europe very very cold compared to average northern central and eastern portions of europe looking at europe uh, in more specific you can see here that the first um the first seven days or so very cold compared to average. The Baltic states, Scandinavia, Finland, uh, and then into Ukraine. I was, of course, in Poland during the course of last week. Temperatures uh, actually below average here, as you can see here. Warmer than average, Western Scotland, England, Wales, Ireland, Northern Ireland. Very warm compared to average. Portugal, Spain, France, Belgium, Southern Netherlands, uh, Western and Southern Germany, the Alpine region. Is warmer than average as well as parts of the Balkan region. Also, looking at the extremes that have taken place around the world in the last few days here. So this is uh, a, the Twitter feed of disaster news. So you can see here Palm Beach in Florida getting hit by some very very strong storm uh, conditions here. Damage from a tornado uh, was evident. This is of northern sumatra and in indonesia flash floods affecting this region of the world saudi arabia it's been incredible the the disturbed weather that we've seen over saudi arabia in the last uh, couple of weeks here uh, you know flash flooding large hail has been an ongoing problem in this region this is balochistan in uh, pakistan here massive floods as you can see here, uh, this is again from Pakistan uh, in recent days. So I'm just quickly skipping through here to show you exactly what's taking place. French Polynesia in the South Pacific here. You can see here serious flooding. So uh, it's not just drought uh, like we're seeing in parts of uh, Iberia, uh, you know, enhancing the, the, the heat across this region. But we're also seeing 
devastating floods. And of course, India, Pakistan, where it has been a much below average temperature wise, a lot of the time the below average temperature comes at a cost and that being flash floods here. You can see here, this is uh, the, the nation of Georgia, a uh, strong storm with hail whipping the leaves off the trees, as you can see here. Um, uh, this is R Rwanda in East Africa. Again, it's not just drought. We're also seeing flash floods. Of course, they, they, that can be attributed, of course, to, to climate change. If you if you uh, believe it's a uh, man-made carbon dioxide that's the that's, that cause, massive floods in parts of Somalia, as you can see here. So that's off disaster news, uh, which is quite interesting here. This is from uh, Maximiliano Herrera. And you can see here each nation, if you if you are on Twitter and you don't already follow them, check out uh, extreme temperatures around the world. It looks at each individual nation near enough each month, looks at whether it was above average or below average in terms of temperature here. So you can see here as I skip through the the the, the, the statistics coming from Maximiliano, um, which is uh, always quite interesting to see here. I'm just trying to skip through quickly to show you because I want to look at the volcanic situation here. But certainly there is plenty of heat records to speak about at the moment. Big contrast over Europe as well. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to skip through this if I'm being honest with you folks because I feel that this is the biggest story of the day here and I was wanting to specifically look at this. Ocean temperatures are at their warmest at, at According to NOAA and other sources, this is the global sea surface temperature. And you can see here that we're uh, right at a new precipice with regards to the uh, the temperature anomaly. But it's not, uh, everywhere isn't, um, you know, scorching um, and ocean heat waves and, not, and whatnot. We've got some strong cooling, as you can see here, across parts of the, the North Pacific, especially uh, in the northwestern portion of the Pacific. And as well as that, really, from south of Alaska all the way down the west coast of North America, we're seeing record-breaking cold sea surface temperatures, uh, you know, off California, for example. You can see here the strong warming off the Peru coast. That is now the onset of the El Nino, but it is still a neutral state, the Enzo, at the moment here. We don't have an official El Nino as such at the moment. But it's interesting, very strong negative Pacific os a decadal oscillation versus a warming Enzo state, which is quite an interesting kind of almost confliction here. Strong warming over the North Pacific. We've got a warming in the normal Indian Ocean, a cold Western North Atlantic. But we've got a very warm Caribbean through the tropics, uh, Cape Verde Islands, the Canaries, up into Spain and Portugal. We've got some very strong warming here. It'll be interesting to see what influence that has later down the road. But of course, there has been information put out there that 19,000 new underwater volcanoes have been discovered underneath the ocean surface. And we know very, very little when it comes to volcanic activity and really the oceans overall. So the question is, why is the oceans warming so much? Is it all that incoming solar radiation that's heating the oceans around the world? I personally don't believe that's the case. The, the, the concept, the theory that increased underwater volcanic activity, increased seismic activity is adding heat from bottom up, warming up the oceans, then that is then kicking up uh, increased water vapor into the atmosphere and therefore we're seeing the oceans warm and the atmosphere warm in response to that. That I believe is a very, very, very plausible theory indeed here. And this article goes on and talks about the, the of course, the Hunga Tonga uh, Haiapi um, eruption that took place uh, January last year increasing water vapor and therefore increasing not just the atmospheric temperature with the increase in water but also the ocean temperature as well i've run out of time unfortunately but this is food for thought at the very least so have a think about it let me know in the comment section below what you think about this enjoy the rest of your day and i'll be back again tomorrow with more thanks for watching